better. And I come in, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. I come in and as far as I can, just clip that. And then I got those little nubs, what I call nubs. You come in here, clip those a little bit. And this is, um, again, uh, depending on how clean you want this fly to look, I, I designed it to be pretty clean. Um, so I want to make sure I cover up everything. And I cut those nubs down. And then again, my thread, as I'm doing all this, it's unwinding and untwisting. When I make those wraps, it's going to be at its widest. And I just want to capture all that foam down. And see how it, again, unwound so it's now flat. So it takes me less wraps to cover everything up. Okay, Kind of secure everything with those wider wraps. And then just another little piece, another, uh, my glue's kind of getting old. Another little bit there. Bring that guy forward. One, two, three wraps. Cinch it up a little bit. And then I just hop from here, I go on the top, get back to my um, segment right there. Okay. And then um, if you want an under, under wing, you can do so. Um, I'm kind of 50 50 on whether or not, you know, it doesn't really. I don't think the fish eat one fly over the other because there's a, an underwing, but just for kind of demonstration purposes and, and sellability, I think it does add something to it. Um, so what I do is I have this um, wing material from Montana Fly. Comes This is the, the uh, ether foam and it comes white. I just hit it with a dark marker to get to kind of tame it down a little bit from white. Um, you can see here. I may have even made this stuff myself with the Super 77, stuck it together, but this is what it generally um, sent around. You can kind of see what, what that material is. Um, and I use different cutters as far as stonefly. I use a stonefly wing cutter. Um, here's some other material also that they sell also. It's, it's um, durable, I can't remember what they call it, but it's a little more durable. Um, so what I do is I cut those out with the stonefly wing cutter for the appropriate size. I don't remember, maybe size 6 or something. And I just lay it so it's over uh, the back end of that last segment, or the last piece of foam, kind of centered. One, two wraps, and then I pull it out and I make sure that it's, you know, I don't want it sitting this way on my finished product. So I just kind of um, even things out so it looks somewhat centered. Okay, and the, again, this step here is is one that you don't have to do, but I think it makes again the fly look a little bit cooler. Um, and then crystal flash. Um, I don't think again the fish is going to eat it because it doesn't have it, but I think it certainly doesn't harm the fly in any way. Actually, I think it uh, it'll add to it also. Um, so I lay that in, a couple wraps, and then pull it back. Okay, try not to make too many wraps, and then come back to here. Okay, if you want to add more, you can always add more. And then <clears throat> I use cow elk on this this fly, and I, that's where I get real picky on what hair I use. Um, this is um, this is a good good piece of of elk, you know. Um, I don't want a piece that's super stiff. Um, and then I just kind of come in there and gauge how much I need with my scissor blades. Get a good chunk off of there and then come in here and clean it all up because you're going to have a lot of a lot of that stuff there. Theo, are you cleaning up later? <laughs> and then again with that hair stacker, that cool one that I have, it's it it wouldn't it would just get stuck in there so yeah I use a little bit bigger one um, and I just put it in there <clears throat> and you know when your hair comes off it naturally it's tapered you know back kind of back towards the, the tail end of the animal um, so when you put it in your hair stacker usually it's kind of mixed all together <clears throat> um, so you get fibers kind of, most of your fibers are angled this way as that taper, but you get a few that are kind of stuck this way. So what I like to do, and I'm again kind of picky when it comes to that, um, is I'll stack them so that all the tips are aligned, and then what I can do is just kind of push them down 
So you want them all going the same way? Yeah, it's just my pickiness. But again, it's not gonna. It's not gonna hurt. If you make some that you catch the fish that like them going that way, you might. I haven't thought about that. And then another thing too is when it, when you do that, when you pull it, you hit it with your thumb and you kind of pinch it down, and it kind of helps to turn. You know, so all those fibers now are, are in the same kind of the same direction. Yeah. yeah. Like that came off the. Hunt. Yeah. So, and then if you find any broken tips or anything like that, you can get rid of those. But um, so now I just want to. The more you transfer it, the, the better chance of getting those mixed up. So I just want to come back here to almost the full length of that wing, uh, under wing. Lay it in there. One, tight. Two, tight. Three, tight. Okay. So I took three bites into it. Again, if I use um, a lighter thread, it would have broke right there. Okay. So what I like to do is gather all the butts together, get my blade as close as possible, and just make one cut. Okay. Because you don't want to leave the head right there. No, no. Um, elk hair. No. Type typical air hair, yeah. elk hair head. You don't want that right there. Nope. It's going to be flush. And, and there'll be some butts right there, just like as there is right now. If you cut it too short, you'll start pulling those out and your your hairs will start falling out. Um, so now at this point, um, legs. So I, ha I already have them pre-cut. One, two wraps and snug. Again, I like the, the these brown legs. Um, just kind of have that proper size, I guess you can say that they don't um, they don't. Uh, squeeze up on themselves when you tighten them, especially if you crank down you can you can add a little more torque to it but they come out real at that proper uh, angle. Now one last bit of glue. Also I like to put them in the butts of the hairs that way if you do cut them real short they're stuck in there now so they won't fall out. And then bring this back over one, two, okay so, and then if you need to, your crystal flash maybe sometimes rolls over on you or whatever. Now, when I first started tying this fly, I, I kind of finished it there, and it worked great, and it was fine. Um, but what I found out, like, on certain rivers, you know, I was on the Arkansas, when it hit me, it was just like, I could not see this stupid thing in the water, because it, the, the light, whatever it was, I couldn't see it, because of the brown. And so I went home and started tinkering around with something I can put on there for visibility. So I, I use this. This is a uh, gator hair from Montana Fly and it's um it's basically an antron. Um, either you can probably get it spooled or in, in carded or something like that. But you can use white or green or whatever. I just happen to like this color the best because it shows up um, on the water in, in almost any condition. So what I do is I just lay it on there. I, I cut those tips so that they're all even, okay? And then I lay it right on top there. And I put one, two, three. Um, another thing that I've been doing lately too is, is um, you know, you can whip finish it there. But what I've been doing also too, kind of testing out, is just hitting it with glue. And then coming through and making a few more wraps. And that way it's, everything's, including the hair, I mean the indicator is now glued in there. So then come in here not too long and that way you just have something now to um, a little high vis up on top. And then um, you just have not to whip it I glued, it. glued it. I glued you don't it. need to whip? No. I mean because that's super glue I mean yeah, it's good. It's, it's on there. Yeah. Um Certain ones you can. I mean, if you're if you have something like a big pattern like this where you're tying it off the same way, you can do that. I know. I think it was Dave Whitlock used to do. I think on his like that red fox squirrel nymph that he has. He had um, what did he do? He he had something, some special way that he did that, and that's probably where I first saw it. Um, because he used to tie a loop or something, and um, maybe a piece of mono, I, I think piece of mono, he laid it on there, and then um, he maybe dubbed it over it so it was finished, a finished look to it, you know, added dubbing, and then he maybe cut his, and then pushed it through, and then pulled it, something like that, I can't remember, but it was like, 
you know, because he didn't whip finish or he didn't, uh, that way he didn't glue it because it was wrapped under all those 